So what does the anti-nuclear peace vigil mean to you? Well, there's nuclear uh, weaponry and that, uh, it doesn't discriminate whether it's military or civilian and dropping any nuclear bomb because it won't discriminate will go beyond what war is, which is a military action. Uh, civilians shouldn't be harmed in war. Um, vegetation, animals, and all that that gets taken out from a nuclear explosion and the fallout thereof. Uh, so I want um, zero nuclear weapons left on planet Earth. We have work to do. We've been trying to do the work. And uh, Bill Clinton did disarm 10,287 nuclear warheads. Uh, we'd like others to come and disarm within their nation, but we're still left with 7,500 plus. Um, so that's until we get to zero, but not only we, the planet Earth. I want world peace. Um, I might not get it in my time, and but the nuclear in issue, uh, I want that taken care of, and um, maybe that'll help with world peace. So Barry, you've been a peace activist for a number of years, uh, yet you always end up out here at the peace vigil in front of the White House. What keeps pulling you back here? This is the one spot, if you want to speak truth to power, you really couldn't pick a better spot. I mean, White House is right across the street. And we have to speak truth to power. And obviously, Concepcion passed away one week ago today. Um, and you heeded the call and you came to the peace vigil. How important is this vigil? It, it's the longest running vigil. How important is this vigil? I think it's incredibly important. Uh, it's free speech, I mean, at its best. I've, I can't, I don't even know how to put the importance of this into words. Um, I understand the future of the vigil is kind of up in the air right now, but if anything, I hope there should be a permanent memorial placed here across from the White House. The longest running protest in United States history deserves a little bit of recognition. And you're also known for your signs, your very plain Sharpie signs. What is this sign here about? Uh, that's a quote from Noam, Ch Noam Chomsky, and it says, everybody's worried about stopping terrorism. Well, there's a real easy way. Stop participating in it. And it seems our solution to terrorism, time and time again, is to drop more bombs. And what's the result? Oh, all of a sudden, the terrorist threat has grown a little bit more. The threat to our national security is greater. What do we do? Oh, we drop more bombs. Oh, my God, the threat's increasing now. We have to drop some more bombs here. And it's a vicious cycle that will never end. You don't... Bombing people creates terrorists. It's that simple. The peace vigil is a beacon for, is, is known as a beacon for a lot of people fighting against war and fighting against military armament. Do you think that this is having an effect? Um, a direct effect, no, but everything we do has an effect. It's ripples. Uh, there are hundreds or thousands of people that pass by here every single week. Yeah, and if we can just change the heart or the mind of one or two people, who knows what that's going to amount to in 10 years or 20 years from now. You know, I could be talking to our next president out here one day. Mm -hmm. Well, here's another one of your famous signs. It just says, it's very simple, imagine peace with the peace sign. You've been doing signs now for a number of years, ever since before Occupy. Yeah, well, pretty much started with Occupy. I, that's where my activism really started. Uh, around 2003, when we invaded Iraq, I was with the m minority who said, why are we invading Iraq? They had nothing to do with 9-11. Mm -hmm. you know, but we did it anyway. And for a few years, I was like, wow, people aren't, just aren't waking up. And then Occupy started, and I was like, oh, finally. And then, of course, we know what happened to Occupy. And I don't want to talk about them in the past tense, but of course, the camps were all moved and everyone went home, things got quiet a little bit. And I know a lot of people that might read your stuff may not agree with me here, 
but I do feel that Bernie Sanders is taking the same message that Occupy gave voice to and is putting it in, into action. Is he a messiah? Is he the end-all be-all? Absolutely not, and he'll be the first one to admit it. He's one person, and it's not going to matter who you put in the White House without a political revolution, which is what he's calling for, getting millions of people involved and engaged in the political process again rather than just letting Bank of America and Walmart and Boeing and Goldman Sachs basically have all the influence over our elected officials. It's time they work for us again, and I really like Bernie. I believe his integrity in that regard. He works for us, not for the moneyed interests, and that's what we need right now. Okay, Barry, well, thanks for your comments, um, and we hope that the peace vigil will be kept going by folks like you. What would you tell people out there that may want to be interested who may be interested in participating or volunteering some time for this, what would you tell them? Um, I would tell them to come down and talk to Filippos. He's been spending the majority of the time here watching it because I just came down after I find, found out Connie had passed away. So I, I had actually been away for about a year. So I would talk to somebody that's been here throughout the duration. Thanks, Barry. Thank you. Is that okay? I know, you'll cut all the birdie stuff, right? Uh, no, not necessarily. He's not.